Okay, so in this video, we will look at very simple examples of so-called limits at infinity in order to lay the foundation for more interesting examples. So we'll start very easily. A limit at infinity is when we let x or whichever variable we are using approach either positive or negative infinity. So let's start easy. Limit as x goes to, say, positive infinity. Let's see if we can find a pattern as we go along. So we'll use x. Well, this is pretty obvious as x goes to infinity. So x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now we're just being redundant. As x goes to infinity, x goes to infinity. So it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And so we simply write the limit is infinite. Be careful that the limit doesn't really exist. We use the notation equals infinity to say that the limit is undefined, but specifically by blowing up. As x is getting larger and larger and larger, the expression, in our case x, is also getting larger and larger and larger. What if we considered, as x goes to infinity, x squared? Well, the same thing. As x keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, x squared is even bigger. Imagine x being 10. 10 squared is 100. Then x being 100. Then 100 squared is 10,000. Then x being 1,000. x squared would then be a million. So as x is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, x squared is also getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the limit is also equal to infinity. Well, you may say, well, what about x cubed? Same thing. As x goes to infinity, x cubed grows even more rapidly, so it also blows up. And you see where this is going. Let's look at just one other example. But now, let's say of a fractional power, root of x. Well, if you, for simplicity, use x to be a perfect square, you say, well, okay, if x were, say, 100, root of 100 is 10. If x were 10,000, root of 10,000 would be 100, and so on. So you see that as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so does root of x. Not as quickly as x, x squared and x cubed, but it still blows up. So in general, if you take any positive power of x, and you let x approach infinity, the limit will be infinite. In the case of the square root, n would be one half. It could be one third, it could be four over seven, doesn't matter. As x goes to infinity, any positive power of x will also go to positive infinity. You may ask, well, what happens if we let x approach negative infinity? Well, it's kind of the same answer, except that for odd powers, the answer will be negative infinity. We'll look at two very short examples. Let's go with x to the 4. If you take an even power of a negative number, it is positive. And so as x goes to negative infinity, x to the 4 will go to positive infinity. On the other hand, if you considered x to the 5, well, 5 is an odd power. An odd power of a negative quantity is also negative. And so when x goes to negative infinity, x to the 5 will also go to negative infinity. And that's really the only difference. So just be careful when you let x approach negative infinity that you consider whether the power is even or odd. Now, now what if we look at, say, in the case here, of a negative exponent, that would be a reciprocal of a positive power of x. Let's see what happens in such a case. Let's start simple. We'll let x approach infinity and ask what happens to 1 over x. 
Well, think of it numerically. If x approaches infinity, we could let x approach infinity in multiples of 10. Because if x equals 10 first, then x equals 100, then x equals 1000, x equals 10,000, and so forth. So we're letting x approach infinity by multiples of 10. So 10, 100, 1000, 10,000, and so forth. Let's now look at 1 over x. This would be 1 over 10, which is in decimal 0 0.1. This would be 1 over 100, which in decimals is 0 0.01. 1 over x squared would be 1 over 1000, which would be 0 0.001. This would be 1 over 10,000, which would be 0 0.0001. And you can see where this is going. You have 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, 0 0.00001, and so forth. And so you see as x gets larger and larger and larger, the reciprocal gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and so it simply shrinks to zero. And this is very intuitive, right? If you divide a fixed constant by something very big, you get something very small. So as your denominator blows up to positive infinity, the fraction shrinks to zero. And the same goes for any positive power of x here. As we have seen before, as x goes to positive infinity, x to any positive power will go to also positive infinity, so the reciprocal will just be going to zero. As we have said, x to a positive power will go to positive infinity, as x goes to positive infinity, and so the reciprocal will be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and so it will shrink to zero. In the case of x going to negative infinity, it doesn't make much difference, because if you divide 1 by something very large and negative, sure the result is negative, but it will also be shrinking to zero. Suppose x were, say, here, approaching negative infinity, and still consider 1 over x, well, x would be, say, negative 10, negative 100, negative 1,000, negative 10,000, and so forth. So x is getting larger and larger and larger, but always negative. Well, the reciprocal would be negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, negative 0 0.0001, and so you can clearly see that 1 over x will still be shrinking to 0, except now it will be shrinking to 0 from the left-hand side. The values will be negative, but still getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's the same idea as x goes to negative infinity. And we could have replaced 1 by any constant, right? This could have been 5, 7, 1,016. It doesn't matter. Any constant term over something that is getting larger and larger and larger, either positively or negatively, will be shrinking to zero. The only thing you have to be wary of in the case of x approaching negative infinity are cases where n may be a fraction and has a Neven denominator. In such a case, the limit may simply not exist. A simple example of this would be x approaching negative infinity, root of x. Since we only use real numbers here and don't really consider complex numbers, the root of a negative number is undefined. It is a complex number, not a real number. And for us, we will never go into the realm of complex numbers. So as x goes to negative infinity, well, x is negative, and we attempt to take the root of a negative number. So for us, we simply say it is undefined.
and you would have the same problem if you, you had here a fourth root, a sixth root, an eighth root, and so forth. So just keep that in mind. This will not be a problem when x approaches positive infinity, but whenever x approaches negative infinity, you have to be weary of fractional powers involving an even denominator. As we are staying within the realm of real numbers, even roots of negative numbers for us will be undefined. And that's it.